No. Here. Yeah. Hello, Parker. Informer. Yeah. You what? Yeah, okay, will do. All right, it's a meet. Sounds quite good. Do you want to come on? Where is it? Usual. First class, Parker's got delusions of grandeur. He won't follow it. Come on, Parker. Who's he? Never you mind. What have you got? The goods. The real McCoy. The Coogans. Big John and Paul, if you want him. You want them? You got them. When? This evening. Uh, it's a big drop, maybe ten pounds of uncut heroin. Coogan's chancing that under his own roof. Oh, that's the nice part. The offer came suddenly. The original buyer got busted, leaving ten pounds of uncut floating, so Coogan's moved in. Has to be their house. There wasn't time to arrange anything else. I wanted the Coogan brothers for a long time. Well, now you've got them. Well, the gang's all in. It's more like a CI-5 out. I mean, a big drug drop like this, not a drug squad man in sight. This isn't just about drugs, Benny. No? Anyway, it's nothing to do with them. It was our tip-off. So I hope you've eaten plenty of spinach. Right, let's go. I haven't found anything yet, but we will. You will. Get it.
You should see the mess they made inside. I sent for you, Mr. Merlin, because... Oh, because John always said to send for you if there was trouble. You did the right thing, Frank. And they've obviously gone. They left half an hour ago. They didn't find anything? Nothing. Nothing? What a damn thing. Went over the place with a fine tooth comb. Twice. With two tooth combs. We even got infrared equipment and sniffer dogs. Parker gave us a bump stairs. Oh, he's been reliable before. Giving you some hot tips. Yeah. I reckon somebody outbid the Coogans, you know. Well, I mean, ten pounds of uncut going floating. Somebody got there first. We never found it because it was never there in the first place to find. So where does that leave us? Up the creek without a paddle? Not quite. We've still got the Coogans. Let's have a quiet chat with them, shall we? one's going to do the hitting. Not you. <laughs> Not enough weight. And you? <laughs> you break your hand on me. It's not glass, this. And this? Hard as rock. Like your brother works out on it some mornings. 53 bouts when I was in the ring and no one ever put me out. Uh, if this is the best you could do, Mr. Cowley, uh, it's not good enough. You shouldn't believe every rumor you hear, Coogan. There's going to be no hitting. Mine, isn't it? Sit down, Colin. Sit down. See to him. You've been working him over, haven't you? Yeah, now it's my turn. Well, you won't find me any easier than him. John can take it, and so can I. I don't think you're ready to play in the big league yet. So just be a good boy, eh? When we're ready for you, we'll call for you. I'm ready now. Of course you are. in the shadow of his big brother. I know. What is he up to? He's had to go and see the minister. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Come in. Shut the door, George. You're up early, minister. And I dislike being up early, but it was imperative. Imperative. David Merlin. Merlin? That shyster. He lives up to his namesake. He's a legal wizard, has friends at court, and represents the Coogan brothers. Uh, represents? <laughs> what does their dirty business, you mean? David Merlin is a highly respected lawyer. Not by me, he isn't. Nor by me. But he's raising an awful stink. He's alleging damage to private property. Search without warrant. Without warrant? You know the terms of my brief. Yes, George. And it is that brief that is endangered at this moment. I know what you do and why. But finally, ultimately, we must answer to the government of this country and they, in turn, to the voters. 
Can you hold the Coogans? Do you have a case? Uh, not at the moment, no, but given a few hours interrogation... Then you must release them immediately. Oh, I'm sorry, George. John Coogan is a thug. Drugs, extortion, prostitution. In the eyes of the British public, John Coogan is a revered athlete. And he's up for an OBE. Until you can prove otherwise... George, I'm not asking you. I'm telling you, if you can't hold the Coogans, then release them. Get them away from here. And maybe I can hold the cork on a fizz bottle which is very close to bursting. George. Yes, sir. Yes, Minister. Right away. I knew you couldn't hold me. Miss Paul. I'll go and get him now. Yes, sir. OK, the cage is open. You can fly away. Come on, Sonny. Coogan. This guy's dead. Well, I want them, Merlin. I want them all. Cowley, his organisation, whoever killed Paulie. It's going to be very expensive, John. Very. Look, just get them out from behind their badge or whatever. Break them. Make them ordinary people again. You take care of that, and then one night, down some dark street, I'll take care of them my way. <laughs> Got a solid case, haven't we? Not in the conventional sense. They ain't busting here. Took me and Paulie without a warrant. They're CI-5. Special brief, part of the government. And you can't sue the government per se. So what do we do? There's another way. Just as good. A court of inquiry. Afraid so, George. Questions and answers in the open. The strength of this organisation is its anonymity. Many people are saying it has too much strength. Here. It's been agreed, George, at a higher level than even I can buck. The court of inquiry convenes on Thursday. Who will you want as counsel? To present your side of the affair. Council, my God, I founded this organisation. I'll answer for it. I thought you'd say that. And I agree. But you understand, George, you won't just be defending the rights and wrongs of the Coogan issue, but the continued existence of the whole department. I understand. You'll be up against some very tough opposition. <laughs> David Merlin, he'll mastermind it, I'm sure of that. But the actual inquiry, he'll want someone beyond reproach. Someone... Utterly sincere, utterly committed. I think you'll be up against Geraldine Mather. Well? It's revolting. Unbelievable must be exposed and stopped. Yes, Mr. Merlin, I will prosecute this case. A court of inquiry, Miss Weaver. There will be no actual prosecution. Oh, there will be, the way I intend handling it. Are there any actual ground rules as to where the inquiry will be held? A room in some convenient location. That's what I thought. So, let's play our first ace. She wants to hold the inquiry here. In the room in which Paul Coogan died. Oh, for pity's sake. Her argument is it will save time if the court of inquiry should wish to visit the scene of the crime. I've already agreed to her demand, George. Oh, you have, have you? If we don't, she'll only make further capital out of it. And if we do, she's already ten points ahead on sheer emotional appeal. Oh, let her have the room. She doesn't frighten me. Oh, she should. A good, healthy respect, at least. She's out to break CI-5, George, and you with it. Lord God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, holy and most merciful Saviour, deliver us from the bitter pains of eternal death. You know the secrets of our hearts. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Forgive us our sins, and at our last hour, let us not fall away from you. We have entrusted our brother, Paul Martin Coogan, to God's merciful keeping. 
and we now commit his body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. In sure and certain hope of Doesn't the seem right, to keeping life, Paul's friends away. To our Lord Jesus Christ, his friends. Died, was buried, Prince Charlie, Nosher and Harry. Ugly mug staring out of some newspaper. We've got to do like that in sex. We've got to be respectable. In his presence is the fullness of joy. And at anyway, his they didn't forget him. It is pleasure forevermore. Amen. Amen. I'll check the cards and uh, if anyone did forget him, they'll hear from me. I'm not going to let them cover this up. They're covering my brother with earth, and he's only 29 years old. Cut down. Are you suggesting it was deliberately done? I know it was. And I mean to prove it. Well, have you any idea who might have done it, Mr. Coogan? I mean, um, did your brother have any enemies? <laughs> Didn't ever do it, did I? Ah, just right. I'm bothered, Frankie. Yeah? But when they bust in, right time, right place. So who tipped them off? I want to know. Right? Are you all right? Mm, yeah. I thought you'd be up by now. Hey? Organic food in the belly, working out. What for? Huh? What for? I said, working out. What for? So I can rupture somebody else's spleen. That was an accident. Yes, yeah, that's right. He ran right onto my fist. Now, look, Ray. I was there, right? He came at you. You turned and belted him. I mean, it could have happened anywhere. Pub brawl anywhere. It could have happened to anyone. Well, it didn't happen to anyone, did it? It happened to me. You only hit him once. Oh, I see. Oh, well, that's all right, then. You mean if I'd hit him twice, I could have killed him twice? You know what they made of me, don't you? Do you know what they've made of us? Eh? Well, it frightens me to death, Bodie. Yeah, well, I've only come to tell you that Carly's got a job for us. Not me, mate. I'm suspended, remember? Yeah, me too. Material witness now, you know. I saw you beat that innocent young man to death. Don't make jokes, Bodie. I'm telling you, I don't make jokes. Yeah, well, so it's the only we... way I can get through, isn't it? Now, come on, Ray. The old man needs us. Look, he's fighting for his life out there. I've never seen him like this. We owe him one. <laughs> Listen to him. We. What happened to the look after the number one credo, then? Yeah, well, don't do as I say. Do as I do. Yeah. OK, well, I'll leave you to wallow in your own self-pity. I'll handle it myself. Since when did you ever handle anything on your own? Yeah, well, since when did you... So why us if we're both suspended? Because Parker's my pigeon. Our pigeon. And he's dropped out of sight. Well, wouldn't you, with a Coogan on the loose? Yeah, well, he's the man who started this rolling. And Cowley wants to speak to him. Okay. Stop that. You are Mr. Cowley? Yes. Miss Mather? I'm glad you stopped by. I thought you might try to do something like this. Do what? Remove or destroy this evidence. What? I must insist that this room remains exactly as it is. I was just trying to make it more habitable. You do not regard it as habitable at this moment? Well... Yet quite habitable enough for you to conduct your interrogations in. Very well, but you won't mind standing for a whole day then. Well, maybe you could sit on my knee. <laughs> Oh, I anticipate the inquiry will take several days, Mr. Cowley. Of course, there must be chairs, but this kind of chair. I want the Board of Inquiry to know the kind of comfort you offer your unfortunate prisoners. I want them really to feel it. Let's go. Fool. 
No, Carly is many things, but a fool he is not. Right, last one, and then we go on, right, Dale? Deal. Yeah. Now you look at this. I can see it. Whoa, whoa. Hello, Dale. Yeah? Parker. 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 Henry Parker. Oh, he's a little fella. Quite slim, do you know? I don't know anyone called Parker. What makes you think I should know someone called Parker? Well, he, uh, digs your sort of scene, do you know what I mean? Who are you, anyway? Just friends. What's going on? Oh, look out. They say they're looking for someone called Parker. Yeah, well, there's only one thing you should be looking for when you call here. But all the time you're standing there, you're keeping away the real trade. So go, eh? Disappear. They can't destroy us. They can. They might. What am I really up against tomorrow? <laughs> Geraldine Mather. Oh, I know about her. I'll take my chances with her. Meet her fact for fact. She doesn't scare me. Well, not much. But what else? The inquiry board. Well, there's Stannard. Now, he's a fair man. Got a mind, too. He won't be swayed by pure emotion. The inquiry will be presided over by Judge Hall. No problem there. He'll only be interested in the pure facts of the matter. Then there's Mackay. Oh, oh yes, Harold Mackay. The man who's opposed CI-5 since its inception. He'll be seeking to make political capital out of this. And he'll try to make it over your broken back. <laughs> Cheers. Okay. She could prosecute me any time. I'll see you in court. Right. shall be presiding. My colleagues, Mr. Stannard and Mr. Mackay. Uh, before we begin, may I point out to members of the press that they are here as a matter of courtesy and not as a matter of right. It may well be that certain testimony will be subject to the Official Secrets Act and that this court will instruct that such testimony may not be printed. I reserve the right to question and protest any such instruction, Mr. President. Miss Mather, may I point out to you that this is not the sort of court to which you are accustomed. Ultimately, we have no judicial powers. We can merely make findings and recommendations. I'm aware, Mr. President, that this is not a court of law. But I hope we shall find that it is a court of justice. <clears throat> we shouldn't be sitting here. We should be out after you know who. We start again at five. They adjourn at five. Seven hours. I'd like to begin my address with an apology. These surroundings are far from comfortable, but it was my suggestion that the inquiry be held here. I wanted you all to sample the kind of hospitality offered by CI5 to their unfortunate suspects. To try and imagine what it would be like to be held incommunicado in a place like this what would run through your mind miss mather i think we have all taken your point now perhaps if you would remain in the body of the court ci5 criminal intelligence a secret organization a dangerously omnipotent organization answerable it seems to no one but its own controller mr president i must object we are not here to inquire into CI-5. Aren't we? The object of the inquiry is to look into the death of Paul Martin Coogan. Very well, I concede. 
We will confine ourselves to the murder of Paul Coogan. Mr. President. Yes, 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 I agree. Miss Mather, I know you to be a very skillful counsel, but really these cheap tactics do you no credit, you know, especially when they appear to be aimed at the press when it is here that this case is being conducted. The death of Paul Martin Coogan while held in the custody of CI5. You've seen the official photographs and uh, the autopsy report. Coogan died as the result of one blow or several blows that ruptured his spleen. The blow or blows delivered by a clenched fist. that you launched what amounted to a full-scale assault on Mr. Coogan's house. I ordered a squad operation, yes. Ten men? Eleven, including myself. Most of them armed. All of them were armed. So my full-scale attack sounds more accurate than your squad operation. You ran the car in the driveway, you broke down the front door, and then you and your men proceeded to rampage through his house. We searched it. Searched it? Carpets ripped up, furniture torn apart, wallpaper stripped away. We were looking for something small. Drugs. Something small. Ten pounds of heroin. They could have split it up, concealed it in a dozen places. But they hadn't, had they, Mr. Cowley? The fact is that you found absolutely nothing. No. Would you speak up, please, Mr. Cowley? No, we found nothing. Furniture, carpets, all in all, damage estimated at several thousand pounds for nothing. And without a search warrant. I don't need a warrant. Oh, I see. You don't need a warrant. You are outside the laws of this country. It's within my brief. You have a license to pillage, to assault and kill. A desperate men call for desperate measures. Desperate men? Paul Martin Coogan. Two convictions for drunkenness, one for dangerous driving. John Peter Coogan, one arrest for causing an affray. No conviction. These are your desperate men, Mr. Cowley. They are clever. Keep their noses clean. Get others to do their dirty work. Paul Coogan wasn't very clever, was he? He ended up here dead in this room, the result of a beating. It was just one punch. Oh, I see. So you admit the assault. You admit Paul Coogan was punched. In self-defense. Oh, Mr. Cowley, we have all of us heard that excuse before. No more questions at this time. He attacked my men. No more questions. Now, you'll fling out accusations, I think. You will have an opportunity of putting your case later. I would like to call my first witness. John Coogan, come in, please. <coughs> yes, they uh, held me in a room just along the corridor. Were you handcuffed? Yes, all the time. And tied to my... Uh, my hands swelled up for quite a while afterwards. How many men were in the room with you? Three. Three against one? Why? Did you resist in any way? No, all I kept doing was asking for my lawyer. Which they denied you? Yes. They denied you the legal and fundamental right of every citizen. But we'd made no charge against it. Which, in my view, makes it even more despicable. Mr. Coogan, did they offer violence to you? Well, they tried. No, oh, he's lying. Never at any oh, point. Three of them, a chair got broken in the scuffle, but even with three of them, they couldn't hurt me. Because you are a powerful man, Mr. Coogan, but your brother, Paul, he lacked your physique. Uh, Paul, he was, uh, he was just a kid. Stranger will scare him off. If he goes underground again, we'll never find him. Yeah, that's right. Just keep an eye on him. We'll pick him up later. Right. 42 Fennel Street. Got it. You're next. Right. Frank Williams, please. Keep your uh, guard up and uh, off clever. <sighs> it was like a war had started. I came running around the side of the house and saw them. A number of armed men? Yes. Doing what? Going mad, I thought. They smashed down the front door. Then what did you do? I ran forward. Then? One of them hit me. Here. Why? I don't know. Just, just hit me, that's all. Oh. Mr. Williams, isn't it a fact that you were armed yourself? 
Weren't you carrying a shotgun? Well, yes, sir. Mr. Williams, why were you carrying a shotgun? Uh, it was a fox about. Mr. Coogan told me to try and get it. Do you have a legal permit to own a shotgun? Yes. And you were in the boundaries of Mr. Coogan's private property, or what should have been considered Mr. Coogan's private property, except that Mr. Cowley and the CI-5 do not, it seems, respect a man's personal privacy. I think that answers the point you raised, except for one thing, Mr. Cowley. Williams here was carrying a shotgun when he was struck down by one of your men. Yes. Struck down in self-defense, no doubt. Of course. Another possibly desperate man. Yes. Why then wasn't he arrested? Why wasn't he brought in for questioning? We were after the Coogan. You were after them? As a huntsman tracks down game, after them with a sense of purpose, perhaps, after them with a sense of vengeance. No, no, you don't understand. Oh, but you certainly got one of them, didn't you? You got Paul Coogan. Miss Mather, it is just the facts that we want. No further questions. Mr. Carlow, do you wish to cross-examine? No, no questions. Are you sure? Are you sure? No point. He'll lie through his teeth for only cloudy as you Well, in that case, I think this would be a convenient moment to adjourn for the day. They're finished, for the time being. Let's go. You let him see you. Sorry. Oh. Oh, where's he gone? Look, as soon as I knew he'd rumble me, I moved in. There's a back door. I'm sorry. You're sorry. What now? Ask him. I'm terribly sorry. Just when we needed a break. You were there. Hey? Eh? Today in the courtroom when John hit Williams. Do you remember when we first brought Coogan in? How flashy he was, patting his stomach, saying, my brother works out on this sometimes. Said something like that, didn't he? Yeah, something like that. So what? Well, I was there when you hit Paul Coogan. Now he ain't good punch economical, but it wasn't going to split doors or spleens either. Oh, come on, Bodie, the autopsy report. Yes, yeah, said a punch. But why yours? Yeah, John Coogan. Why not? He's an extra, light heavyweight. I can see him working out with Paul, saying, come on, Paulie boy, hit me as hard as you like. Then Paul trying to live up to Big Brother, you know, says, right, hit me back. John does. Yeah, like Williams today. Nah, Big John's a pro. He's not going to start throwing punches at people, is he? Yeah, even if he pulls them, he's still going to hurt a lot, isn't it? Do a lot of damage. No, nah, no, nah, thanks a lot, mate, but no. Nah. Why not? Well, for a start, Paul didn't show any signs of pain when we brought him in. Ah, uh, would he, though? Eh? Admit his brother's hurt him. Be a sign of weakness in this book. Better admit it's possible. Yeah, it's possible. How do we find out? I don't know. Yeah, you know, Coogan's got a bird at his house. Hi. Hi. I don't think you should be here. This is private property. Yeah, we know. Yeah, we're uh, fans. Yeah, boxing fans, I mean. We were hoping for a glimpse of uh, Big John Coogan. He hasn't boxed in years. Ah, oh, yeah, but when he did, eh? Great, yeah, wasn't he? Fantastic. He's our hero. And he still keeps fit, doesn't he? Oh, yes. Yeah. Works out every morning. Yeah, that's what we heard with his uh, brother Paul. Poor Paulie. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, it was tough. But they did work out together, eh? Sometimes. I mean, exchange punches, that kind of thing. Oh, yes. He hurt him once. Well, John hurt Paul. No, no. Paul hurt John. It was just the other day, in fact. The last time they ever sparred together. Paul really hurt Big John. Pried as much as anything. Mind you, John hurt him back. What? Yeah! Nice talking to you. <laughs> Fools, you damn fools! To go there to that house now. Look, it was a hunch and I think it's paid off. Do you know what that male woman will make of it? Look, the girl said they sparred together. It could let Ray off the hook. He needs off the hook. Don't you think Coogan is aware of that? Look, it's subpoena the girl. What girl? She was in a flight to Spain one hour after you spoke to her. Anything she may have said to you was just, just hearsay, inadmissible. Sorry, sir. Look, we're just trying. I know what you were trying to do, and I'm grateful, but the fact of the matter is it hasn't helped. Not one bit. It's helped me. 
There's a doubt. Now there's a chance I didn't kill Paul Coogan. See you in court. Oh, come on. In view of this flagrant breach, we ask that Mr. Cowdy be directed to ensure that there are no further attempts to harass our witnesses. Is that true, Cowdy? Did your men go out to Coogan's house? Yes, too. Well, then? It was a misunderstanding, and I give a firm undertaking it will not happen again. We accept that. But the incident will be recorded. Thank you. We're way ahead on points. Call Raymond Doyle. Raymond Doyle. Good luck. Quite an impressive record, Doyle. With the police, you became a boxing champion, a Class A marksman with both rifle and handgun. You were interested in kendo and karate and sufficiently interested, in fact, to have actually started a sports club dedicated to those skills. Yes, mainly for the black kids. Obviously, you are obsessed with physical violence. No. Boxing, karate, shooting. Well, I do other things as well. I paint. We know that. We are here to inquire into one of those other things you do like brutalizing helpless prisoners. Oh, I must protest. And I must too, Miss Mather. Mr. Doyle, isn't it part of your CI-5 training to learn to fight with your bare hands? Yeah, that's standard practice. Aren't you taught practice. to break a bone at a blow, to disembowel at a stroke? Aren't you taught pressure points, places to hit, to disable, maim, and kill? A normal self-defense course, such as any commando, any infantryman would be taught. Commandos and infantrymen are prepared for a state of war. I was not aware that a state of war existed in Britain. It was you who struck Paul Coogan, wasn't it? He came up. You struck him, you punched him. Yeah, well, what else was I struck I him so hard that you ruptured his spleen. You killed Paul Coogan, didn't you? I don't know. Come on, we've had evidence that... I hit him, yes. Whether I... I... actually killed him. Well, he played sparring games with his brother. Maybe he hit him. No more questions. Look, you think I want to kill him? Life's important, any life. I believe that. No more questions. Mr. Doyle. John? Is it possible you might have killed yourself? What? Is it possible? Me? Kill Paulie, my own brother? You didn't spar with him. <sighs> Sometimes we used to no. spar. You never sparred with him. You never played games with him. You never laid hands on him. Understood? Yes. How did you get on? Lousy. She made a monkey out of me. Well, you did give her a head start. She's a dragon. She's a woman. Good looking, too. Well, it'll be your turn, soon. Don't worry, I'm not monkey material. Besides, I've never yet met a woman I couldn't handle. Mm. I'll just fix it with my famous smile. Mr. Boney, please. William Andrew Philip Bodie. Yeah, all the princes are such a regal looking baby. You left school at 14? Yeah, there was nothing more they could teach me. Just answer the questions, Mr. Bodie. Yes, sir. Sorry, I'm just naturally jocular. It's my Liverpool Irish background. You joined the Merchant Navy? Yeah. And then you jumped ship three years later at Dakar? Yes, I had an altercation with the skipper. This girl, you see, <clears throat> his girl took a shine to me. And... Your machismo is of no interest to us, Mr. Bodie. Just your violent background. You've been a bouncer in an African club. You've been gun running for both sides during the Congo Wars. A mercenary soldier in Angola, Biafra. Some dubious activities in Jordan. And then you came back here to join the army, where you became a sergeant with the Paris, then you were seconded to the SAS, and now you're with the CI-5. It appears that you hire out your body for any nefarious activity, provided the price is right. Mr. President. I'll rephrase that. 
You hire out your experience, is that right, Mr. Bodie? Yeah, that'll do. And your chief talent is dealing with death, violence, mayhem. How many men have you killed, Mr. Bodie? I can't remember. You can't remember? Do you hear that? This is a member of the CI-5, and he Look, can't... Look, when you throw a grenade in the bush, I mean, how do you know how many guys you kill? In the jungle? Oh, jungle? Yes, Mr. Bodie. I think that is where you belong. You were a member of the squad that attacked Mr. Coogan's house. Yeah. You were the man that struck down Frank Williams. Yes, he had a gun. Yes, you had a gun too, and you were ready to fire it. Look, the informer told us it was heroin. People killed for informer? heroin. Informer? Did you set up this whole disgusting affair on the word of a common informer? It frequently brings results. I want him here. I want to question this informer. I want to see how he measures up against the respectable image of John Coogan. What is his name, Mr. Cowley? Mr. President, this is restricted information. Mr. President, I insist. Of course, if you want to be party to a cover-up. One moment, please. Now, look, Matthew President. To name him in open court, it could put him at grave risk. It would be irresponsible. Nevertheless, Mr. Cowley... We insist upon it. Cowley, this court is ordering you to name the informer. Parker. Henry Parker. And God help him. How'd you get on? What happened to the smile there? Nosy Parker. Sorry, sir. I blurted it out. Blurted what out? About Parker. Oh, right. Yeah. Where are they going? Stay close, but stay clear, too. Don't give that woman another opportunity. John Coogan pursuing his inquiries. Yeah. Well, with his contact, he's got a better chance of finding Parker than we have. Pursued his inquiries. I'll get no minutes. Where are they? Uh, yeah, I, I don't know, sir. I haven't heard a word. A location? Yeah, right. And let's hope they'll not be called to give evidence. The court is now in session. Yeah, I know. Can we see him now? Out of the question. Can he be moved? Look, the man is severely injured. Doctor, can he be moved? Look, why don't you just simply take a statement? Oh, come on. We have all heard a great deal of argument from Miss Mather. Emotional argument. But backed in the main by hard facts. Hard facts. Yes, they are hard. And they are facts. That's the tragedy of it. She's used me as a whipping boy because I founded CI5. But I didn't. You did. Society did. This society did. 
If there were no fires, you wouldn't need firemen. And in God's name, and I invoke him sincerely, I wish you would make my job, my organization, redundant. I wish you would make the streets clean again. I wish you would give every man, whatever his color or creed, the right to be, to feel safe again. But that's not to be. Not yet. And so, you need me. Like it or not, you need CI5. That's why I'm asking you, pleading with you, don't destroy us, don't cut us down. Not until you've got something better to put in our place. Miss Mather has seized upon the word jungle. I am the popular vernacular, that's where it's at, a jungle. We're mad beasts crawling through it, and we are the hunters. That was your argument too. Did I set out to hunt Coogan down? Well, the answer is yes. And it will always be yes, as long as there are beasts like Coogan left to hunt. You showed us photos. Carpets ripped up, cars dented. But what about these? Faces, grown old before they were ever young. Destroyed and racked by drug addiction. Girls scarcely out of their teens, selling their bodies, their experience to the highest bidder. Not for the same purpose as Bodhi, Miss Mather. Not for the same purpose at all. Respectable businessmen, beaten up because they bucked the price of extortion and bully boys. These are the streets we have to walk. Not the bright streets, the mean ones, devoid of hope and all humanity. We walk them, and we brush aside some of the dirt. Not much, just some of the dirt so that there's less to offend when you come along. And now, you're trying to take away whatever teeth we've got left. Why? Why? Because someone got hurt? Because a man died? And I... I regret that. I... I didn't want that. A man died and you want to close down the whole hospital because, like it or not, that's what we are. The surgeons. A messy, sometimes bloody job. And, oh, yes, our knives are sharp. And we have to operate fast and quickly, even clumsily on occasion, to cut out the disease. The disease hurts, but so does a surgeon's knife. Which would you prefer? It's your choice. Mr. Cowley, it would be untrue, patently untrue, if I was to say to you I wasn't moved by your final plea, a passionate plea from the heart, and made even more poignant because I know that you really believe everything you said. Misguided as it is, you believe in your own twisted argument, you believe in your own right and your own omnipotence, and that is the danger that is here, and it's a very real danger. A young, innocent man has already lost his life. Miss Mather! You wanted an informer? Henry Barker, your witness. That was pure Perry Mason, that last minute witness. Whatever, it worked. Partially, we didn't get Coogan. Yeah, well, we will. Anyway, we survived. By the skin of our teeth. The inquiry didn't exactly exonerate us with an unproven verdict. But we did survive. To fight another day. That's your beer, Matt. Yeah, great. Great. Uh, no, no, thanks. I'm tired. I think I'll have an early night. Now leave him, buddy. Well, I suppose you'll get over it soon. No, never. But he'll learn to come to terms with it. Come on, the beer's on me. You're on. And the Scots will be on you. 